Welcome back to Shotoku Tech. So I have a few recent questions and comments on the videos on my Open Media Vault playlist. So let's answer a few of these questions. First up, under Backup with Rsync, we have this comment saying he's getting poor performance using RAID on two USB hard drives connected to the Raspberry Pi. And so I do recall reading in the Getting Started Guide for Open Media Vault, here, warning against using USB drives in a RAID configuration on Raspberry Pi. USB doesn't offer the performance you need to connect your drives to a SATA or SAS port for RAID configuration. And they're explicitly warning it's done at your own risk and the potential for total loss of data. RAID issues involving ARM boards, USB connected drives, or USB RAID enclosures are not supported on the forum. So I hope that answers your question there. So securing the user home folders is actually a really good question and I don't think it was a matter of what the person is doing wrong so much as what is the default behavior and it took me two takes to come up with my best approach on settling this securing the user home folders. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's drill in and see what the default settings are if you followed along in the original video. First, we're looking at shares, and we're looking at the ACLs, the access control list on the home folder. So here, I've just created a new user, Joe, and you can see the users group has read and execute, and others have read and execute. So they won't be able to write in that folder, but they'll still be able to go into that folder and read. So now let's take a look. Yeah, so I'm browsing the home folder share. And I'm going to go into the Joe folder. And I'm going to try to create a new text document. And I can't do it. So I can't write in that folder, but I can still browse it. And that's not really cool for user home folders. This is interesting. This homes share doesn't show up anywhere. And it's actually my user folder. I'm logged in as administrator, and so I'm presented this homes share that doesn't exist in the shares list. So you find that this homes folder is your folder. We're going to look at the SMB settings here. There's no share for homes, and yet I have this homes folder, and it's my folder. So let's look at SMB settings. I'm going to turn off browse the home folder. I think that's, we want to look at this set, we want to look at this setting, browse the home folder. And we're going to switch that off and save it. We have to apply the configuration change. Okay, so I'm refreshing the view. See, even though I switched off browse home folders in SMB, it's still there. And I can still browse it. Oh, and I can create a new text document in the root of the home folder. We don't want that at all. I'm going to go back to Access Rights Management and look at the Access Control Lists. See, at the root home folder share, users have read, write, and execute. And others have read and execute. So that means no matter what, you're going to be able to browse that home folder. So I've set the home folder share back to browsable. And I'm applying that configuration change. But again, I don't want users to be able to browse the home folder share and look at other people's folders. So we're going to go back into ACLs. And on the root, we're going to say execute only. And others is going to have execute only. And now let's see if we get what we want out of the deal here. Okay, so with execute only, I cannot browse the home folder at all. I have access to my homes folder, which is ideal because that's presented to the logged in user automatically. It's a mysterious share. It doesn't exist in the shares list. So this looks like the ideal combinations of settings. In SMB, we left the home folder browsable, but then we set execute only for users and others on the home folder root in the ACL list. And that allows me to have my automatically generated homes folder. 
I have access to my folder. I can't browse the home folder share. I can't see any other user's home folder, let alone access it. And here I'm going to try to type the UNC home backslash Joe, and I can't access that either. So even if I knew the user's name and knew to browse the home folder share, it won't work. So that seems like a pretty good solution for the problem of users being able to access each other's home folders under the scenario from the original video. And that is with the default users read and execute, others read and execute. We changed the ACL on the root home folder share so the users and others only have execute, meaning they can traverse that folder but they can't read it. So I hope that answers your question about the user's home folders and permissions there. Now here's another question on that same backup with rsync. They ask a very simple question. Why not use rsync tool in Open Media Vault? Well, I made a whole video about setting up a job that runs rsync on the command line and syncs from one disk to another. Now if I go into rsync as the service, I can only configure jobs that would copy data from one share to another. So there's, that's the key difference. What the commenter was asking about is to be able to configure an rsync job from one share to another. And as you can see, I have multiple shares on a single data disk. And I actually have two disks with file systems configured on them. One is called data and one is called rsync. Well, I don't have any shares configured on rsync because it's just my backup disk. I just have a scheduled job that runs this rsync command that copies the entire disk named data to the entire disk named rsync. So it's kind of like that RAID 1 mirror, but it only happens once a week when that rsync job runs. I do that Monday at midnight. Otherwise, I'd have to create shared folders in both of the file systems in order to use the rsync tool down below and then run individual jobs for each share copying data from data shared folder to rsync shared folder. And I'd have to do that for each of the shared folders underneath. So I hope that answers your question about why I did the one job copying disk to disk rather than using the rsync tool in Open Media Vault. Anyway, I appreciate everybody's questions about Open Media Vault and I hope you enjoy my Open Media Vault playlist and thank you very much. So make sure to check all the links in the description down below. Please subscribe, check out some of these other videos, and thank you very much. Thank you for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.